Hi there everyone, I'm here once again with Professor Lucy Green. I called her Dr. Green in the last video she was in with us. You haven't been promoted since. No. I just mucked up last time. It's Professor Lucy Green. She's an expert on solar science and, well, that means she's an expert on the sun. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Keith has been helping us out. He's dug up some old books for us. and We're going to have a look at them. I'll show you what I can, but I suspect you'll be telling me more than I'll be telling you. Hopefully. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know. Let's have a look. So, actually... I think we might deglove because okay. we're gonna we're gonna be uh, handling some delicate paper. Now have a look at this. This is. I'll let you pronounce that. Um, thank you very much, Re Regio Montanus Almanac. But the important bit, 1473. 1473. This is seriously old. And you see, look at this, all this lovely stuff. And look at this. This is amazing. Have you got any idea what this actually is? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, I'm not experienced in looking at particularly old manuscripts, mm. but it looks like we've got the signs of the zodiac around the edge. The central bit doesn't, ooh, don't want to break it. No, we'll be really it looks careful. It's very delicate. It looks like it's just held in place with a stitch in the center. Well, there's a picture of it on the screen for everyone. You have a look at it. And if you know what it is, why don't you leave a comment in the description? That is a cool thing, but I want to show you a few things that are a bit more up your alley because Professor Green is an expert on sunspots. We have a copy here of the Philosophical Transactions from 1676. Okay. What does this say here? So this is an abstract of one of Cassini's letters, so an extremely famous astronomer. Some of the divisions in the rings of Saturn are named after him because of the great work he did in astronomy. But this letter is concerning a spot lately seen in the sun, together with a remark about Saturn. So he's gone uh, two for, for the price of one here. He's writing about a sunspot, but he's also saying, I've seen some pretty cool stuff <laughs> on Saturn. This is the accompanying illustration. Well, I'm assuming this is the disk of the so sun. Th so this is the disk of the sun. And then what's been drawn on here, these are the sunspots, these dark features, and the date is shown underneath. So as the sun spins, it carries the sunspots which are on the surface of the sun with it. And if you watch the sun over a couple of weeks, you'll see these sunspots rotating. I'm assuming these are more kind of close up or more detailed mm. pictures of sunspots. I think that one looks like the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> That one looks a bit like a ghost. Oh, I thought an eagle. An eagle? No, yeah, from behind. You know how a lot of people look at clouds and say, oh, I see a dog and I see a car. Do solar scientists look at sunspots and say that one's a spider and that one's a truck? Or are you, do you, are you completely dispassionate <laughs> about them? There are certainly times where we see arrangements of spots on the sun that might look like a smiley face. You can't help but comment on it. Actually, what we tend to do is we name the regions after ourselves. So for my students, we might have Steph's sunspot region that we're studying or Alex's sunspot region that okay. we're studying. Let's put this one away because in here, it just gets better and better. And here we have some Cassini action some more observations of sunspots. These are lovely images. I mean, what I find really fascinating is that people did just draw sunspots. They drew them and drew them and drew them. Back in the 1600s, the telescope had been invented. You could magnify an image, but they had no idea what sunspots are. And in fact, it took us 300 years to work that out. You're going to tell us. I'm going to tell you. What is a sunspot? So, so today we know that they're regions of magnetic field, sort of like tubes or trunks of magnetic field that burst through the surface of the sun. Now, these fields are invisible, but they can exert a force and they can control materials. And what happens on the sun is that they trap the gas where the magnetic fields are the strongest. That gas cools down and then it appears dark. So you're sort of looking here, this is almost a map of the strength of the magnetic field at the surface of the sun. Let's sneak into mm -hmm. the main vault and see what else we've got for you. Keith's been doing his homework. Just a really, just a quick one. Because, you know, mm. we want to we wanna name check our Brits here. This is William Derham. He also a bit of a Sunspot fan. And what we really like about these ones are these are more of the same, really, but this is hand-drawn. Mm. You can't beat a bit of hand-drawn stuff. They're fantastic. And even though they are teeny tiny, there still is shape and structure within these spots. You know, this one's just an outline. That one's filled in. And that one's an outline with a little bit in the middle, which tells me something, actually, about the, uh, the significance of these spots. Just a quick aside, that's pretty impressive note-taking there. Look at that, that's detail. But now it's time for the piece de resistance. Yep. Let's go and have a look. So we're talking about 
Warren Delarue. Warren Delarue, that's right. British just, astronomer. Just, 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 just a moment to appreciate my pronunciation. <laughs> He's the solar scientist of his time, working at the Kew Observatory here in London. I can't believe you can do astronomy here in London with the weather the way it is, but anyway. <laughs> all of these and all of this here, this is his work. These are sunspot observations. This is magic, this stuff. So Warren de la Rue was funded by the Royal Society, supported to take observations of the sun using the technique of photography. Photography? Yeah, so we're moving on now. Look at that. Oh, measurements, volume one. So, they're, okay, they're faint in the photograph, but you can see he's labelled all the components and all the different spots, and then he's written the details about the spots on the page. So this is much more meticulous data collecting now. And the fact that we have photograph a photographic record there's no ambiguity here we actually get to see 1864 i mean i don't know exactly what these columns are but things like the position on the sun the distance from the center of the sun so you've got these crosshairs here so there might be an angle measurement i think they're the sort of bits of information that we would still want today these white gloves actually are imbued with special powers we call them the white gloves of destiny and i'm going to trust them to choose from all of these volumes the best sunspot collection. I've got a good feeling. Right. right. Oh. And I'm just going to let the glove randomly choose a page. <laughs> you managed to pull out a picture where there's absolutely no sunspots, unless that is a tiny one there, but nothing's been drawn on. I think that's probably just a bit of dirt. Do you know what? Amazingly, <laughs> the gloves have found one of those rare minimums. Ah, that's what it is. That, that's, that's, that is really, really special. And I think we should just take a minute to savour this picture taken in 1868 of a very, very rare quiet day on the sun. We do have lots of quiet days on the sun, so... They had rabbits and onions, very popular, calves' head, bacon and greens, and the hind quarter of a house lamb. Venison pie, goose roast, chump of beef, shelter of lamb, cherry and currant pie, apple pie, butter and cheese to follow. That is quite a meal. That is quite a, this is the 18th century of course and if you see any of our portraits around the building they're, they're quite well padded the gentlemen of the spirit. And just to let you in on a little secret we're just about to have our lunch break as well and this is actually making me hungry. Uh, for, yeah I could go a bit of this I think.